because he's been the one that I've seen see play at the most in solo queue. Loving that wit's end on top uh. lane Nautilus, Nautilus just to get your attack speed up and taking full attack speed red runes as well. Welcome everyone to match number seven of the summer season. Shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, we do have Watch here in the bottom lane though. With that relief, he's starting to just get right into that. And there's a flash on Freya and Hemba back. There's a body slam and he's just knocked all the way back with the Condemn. He doesn't want to give the free kill to Okyo at the tower. So he's just going to walk right back into the vein. Attacks down in the fight. Hojin uh -oh. looking for a gank. Hojin's really set up for this. And Smith is level 6. Duke not level 6 yet. He's going to get caught with the twist. And Duke just going to have to use his ultimate to try for an escape. He's trying to use his flash after the dredge line, but not going to hit. So he'll save his flash for now. Meanwhile, bottom, a slight duel between the 2v2. This will matter quite a bit. Hojin looking for an angle from behind Spab with Smeb too, and they're just going to go in there. There's Spirit Rush, but it gets disrupted with the knockup, and Goon will just die to the Hema Plague from Kuro. Nice back off from the rest of his teammates too after the Hema Plague goes down. But now that he has the blade and he's got the Alistair heal, it doesn't really matter. He's going to be losing oh, these Kuro's trades. Oh, Kuro's caught in the middle. He already pulled, so there's a charm afterwards. A little bit of a misstep for him, going way too deep for wards against Najin. Pure finally getting some vision behind there, but they're still just in broad daylight for the Ku Tigers if they start that dragon. Goon tried to position himself first, and there's a teleport coming in from Smeb actually from home with the home guard. And he's gonna twist an advance onto watch this explosive cast to keep all of Ku Tigers behind. And Goon's putting out so much damage onto Kuro, he actually has to pull out and Gorilla caught way behind the fight against Okyu. Meanwhile, Prey gets a kill, but Oki's gonna clean up Gorilla and join the fight once again as Watch starts to chase Smev. Smev's gonna have to flash away from the charm, and that should be a clean dram for Najin. And those little skirmishes where everyone is broken up is exactly the kind of fight that Najin wants. Just eliminating that wave, and they've gotta, they gotta go on this next wave. Yeah, oh, Prey's taking so much damage, though. Pure jumps in, there's a heal. Prey, is he gonna go down first? There's a wild growth to keep him alive. But here comes the teleport from Duke as he lands, and there's the home guard. He's going to charge towards Prey. There's a depth charge. Prey will be pretty far from the fight, but Watch comes in, explodes his cast, and there's a dredge line from Duke to pick up the kill. Goong is now here to try to turn things even worse for Ku, but they will back off. They already got two kills. Notch and Ian Fire turning things around. That was such a good response from Notch, and to be aware that that play had the possibility of coming in. I didn't. The members of the Tigers are in a very flank vulnerable position right now, so they will have to back off. Oh, Hojin actually gets caught, condemned to the wall, and there's a body slam, explosive cat. There's a depth charge onto Prey. He gets caught way out of the fight, and Goon with another kill on the scoreboard, and Najin will walk right towards Baron at 30 minutes. Well, he's still going to have a hard time dealing with Duke. Duke is super tanky right now. He's going to get a little bit of lockdown to Smeb. He does get charmed, and he already had to use his ultimate. And oh, they're going to push him right back in with an explosive cask. And Oki is now here to start the damage on whoever's in front of him. He's going to now latch onto Hojin. And then Kuro, Kuro not able to stick to them. Meanwhile, Duke's going to keep Smeb zoned while Goon picks up a kill onto Gorilla. And Oki just chasing Kuro down. Not going to have an answer for that vein. Oh, there's the Zonias. Uh, but there's the tumble. And Watch is going <laughs> to steal that under from Oki's nose. And Duke's still just keeping Smeb. At bay, but with way more health, and watch just <laughs> with a barrel Smeb, from the side. Smeb is just healing with his passive right now, faster than Duke could actually damage him, <laughs> so. <laughs> needs a little bit of a helping hand there to play style. See if Najin has adjusted some of that coming in after a big loss to Anarchy on opening day. We have uh, Thorn Mail now for Duke, too. That's a lot of damage on that. Shield. Yeah. Oh, and a nice stretch line up to Smeb once again. The culling already used up, and Smeb just cannot move with all this CC coming in. He does jump onto Ogi, but there's a QSS. Wow. A three man knockup coming in for Najini and Fire, and Kuro can't do anything as Goon dances around the sides of the fight, and Najin with a quick ace against the Ku Tigers. And there we go. Finally, the kill goes over to OQ. OQ 5 0 and 6 had a strenuous couple of minutes early on in lane, but it was turned around very quickly, and now they should be able just to push forward for the win right here. Long death timers in this game, and they have a minion wave to make it work. They're just gonna be able to tank it out. They've got this very tanky Nautilus to deal with these Nexus turrets, and that's gonna be it. Najin really rolling to a game wow. one win. Well, very well played. I mean, they executed their composition as it should have been.
And a little bit more surprising might just be the fact that the Koo Tigers seemed really shaken up in that first game. Yeah, they. I think they had a good draft to deal with this too. They had an answer to the vein split push. They did some interesting things in the picket ban phase to make sure that they could deal with what Nachin was throwing at them. But it's just, it was a lot of.